word on so on this week's episode of the podcast we have Stephen Quinn Anon who is also known for his business with Mind Matters Fitness am I saying that right you're correct <laughs> so Stephen do you want to introduce tell a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you do my name is Stephen Quinlan. I am 24 years young. I am a qualified personal trainer, fitness instructor, uh, soon to be life coach. I'm also taking the pathway towards uh, public speaking and motivational speaking. For those who know me, I'm really into the mindset uh, side of training, uh, much more than the fitness and nutrition side of training. Although fitness and nutrition is heavily associated with a strong mindset, so it's kind of that. Uh, uh, combination of the three yeah so, the three uh, really do. they work together don't they like you can't you can't have one without the other true so true and if we take it back to young Stephen when he was younger where did you see your life going did you see it going in this direction or did you have a different kind of road in mind or was it something you never thought about when I was younger sports was always part of my life so growing up, I was always involved in sports and I always had freedom playing sports. Uh, so yes, fitness fitness was always a part of my life and I kind of blended that in with my life right now. Uh, yeah, when I was really young, if you ask me what do I want to be, I would have said an actor or a soccer player, okay? I either wanted to be an actor or a soccer player. Uh, at the age of like 18, 19 years of age then, when I was working a job that I did not like and I was looking around at everyone else in the factory saying, geez, I don't want to end up like them, you know? No offense, but I didn't. And I asked myself the question, okay, what do I want to work at? Like, what, will, what could I work at and be satisfied without the paycheck? Exclude the paycheck. What would I be able to work at and be satisfied? And... When I asked myself that question, thoughts started to come in. So I was like, okay, I like fitness. I love fitness, you know, okay. I also love helping people. I also love talking. So obviously I ended up doing a personal training course. Through that personal training course, I ended up saying, okay, I want to go steer towards life coaching. When I thought of that, now I started going steer towards uh, motivational speaking, public speaking. So I think the important message for your listeners, whoever's listening to this to take away, is you should do something that you love to do or something that makes you happy and satisfied. And if you don't know what that is yet, just ask yourself the question, what do I want to do? So yeah, that's basically where I was when I was younger to where I am now and where I'm going, I guess cool and like that's the cool thing about it as well is the fact that like your your role can change do you know something might really satisfy you then like you know doing personal training it's like yeah that's what I really want to do and that was great but the good thing is like you can change then and, and steer it in a different direction and I think this is something that younger people need to take into account that you know when you're in sixth year and you're waiting on those points for this specific thing that you're going to go do just because you're going and doing that does not mean you have to stick with that for the rest of your life. And this is something that we're like, oh, my God, I'm after doing four years now of college. Like, sure, I have to do that for the rest of my life. Like, I better not change. Like, I wanted that now. I don't or I wanted it then. I don't want it now. What am I supposed to do? And that's where people can feel lost. And this is the good thing is it's kind of like a journey. You know, you're going from personal training. You realize, oh, I actually enjoy the mindset side. It's not that you've done it and wrong or bad from your choice before. That just suited you better there and then. And like, it's like this, it's like a fun thing then. Like it just keeps life exciting that, that you can, you do have a choice to change. It's it's not something that you have to stick with for the rest of your life. Yes, exactly. Uh, well observed and well put together, Natasha, there. And I do think it's important to also uh, follow what makes you happy. You know, like if you ask me my dream and goal right now, with all of my heart, it's motivational speaking. It's all I want to do and it's where I want to go. But in five, ten years' time, I am open to that goal being changed. You know, I am. I'm open to it, and it may happen. And if it does happen, there's nothing going to stop me pursuing what is going to make me happy then, you know? Because we we grow, we mature, uh, life changes, things happen. 
And be with that, it's 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 always okay to change, you know. You see some people, I ask some people working in the job, like, you know, if you're not happy in your job, why don't you leave? Oh, you know, I'm here 10 years and, and the pay is good and it's comfortable and, you know, I'm kind of friends with people. They're just afraid of that new change, you know, where it's never too late to change. Yeah, I think it's that thing where, like, if you did change and, like, something maybe doesn't go wrong it doesn't mean you know you're stuck it just means you obviously have to try something else to get to where you want to be it's that fear of people saying oh I told you so do you know like when I left my job which was a very very like I suppose good job to have and I was going doing coaching and people were saying oh why don't you do it on the side or why don't you do it as a hobby it you have that pressure on you from other people to say oh I told you so you should have stayed in that job do you know and it's it's scary that we take in other people's opinion. If we just kind of close that off, like if you want something bad enough, it doesn't matter how many times it fails. It doesn't mean you have to go back there. It just means you have to kind of figure out, okay, that didn't work. I obviously just need to do something else. So if you genuinely wanted, you don't have to worry about people saying, I told you so, because you will do whatever it takes, regardless of what everyone else is saying. So true. Absolutely correct. Again, just following what makes you happy and ignoring the outside world. Yeah. And I think that's the thing with five year plans as well. Like, I think that was a thing of the past, but it doesn't really work now. Like you see, like years ago, we didn't have the opportunity for online coaching and then that has arised so many opportunities on like TikTok and stuff. People just growing, you know, out of nowhere. Like there's all these fantastic opportunities. So I think the main home take here is have direction. Like, you you know, the direction you're going, like, you know, it's going towards like speaking or motivational speaking of some sort but be open to the fact that it might change your switch, but you have a little bit of direction. I think if you were like, yeah, I want to be here in five years time, exactly here. Like it might actually not be possible. Like the world changes so quickly, especially nowadays, everything's so fast. So give yourself a little bit of direction, but leave, leave space open that you might, you might change your mind. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yes. I love it. Hasha. So true. And you know, like that direction, you could other put it as a vision, you know, and one of my favorite motivational speakers, Les Brown, says, if you have a goal and you have a vision, the how is not important. It is not important how you're going to achieve your goal and vision. As long as you have a goal and vision, the how is going to look after itself. You just need to have that goal or vision or roadmap, basically. Yeah. And I suppose looking at like motivational speaking and heading that way, what kind of gave you that drive and that, that passion that you're like, oh, my God, like that lights a fire in me. How, how did you kind of figure that out for yourself? Brilliant question. So there was a time in my life that I mentioned there uh, a few minutes ago, I was working in a dead end job that I didn't like. Um, there was also lots of other things going on in my life at that time that forced me to kind of fall into a small state of depression. You know, I was very lonely. I was very sad. And I was just going down the wrong path. And I remember I looked up on YouTube, how to be happy. Just, just to look it up, you know. I wasn't severely depressed, but I just wanted to know, can I do this? How to be happy? And I came across lots of motivational speakers. And... I started to really just listen to all different motivation speakers and feed my brain with positivity, feed my brain with new perspectives and new outlooks on life. And truthfully, motivational speakers completely changed my life. And Natasha, to this day, I will listen to motivation speakers. It's like every day, just as people listen to music, I listen to motivation speakers, you know. It's something I really get motivation and um, passion out of so I will say that motivation speakers changed my life and I want to do the same to others I also found out that our thoughts become a reality so we become what we think about so let me say that again we become what we think about and when I found this out Tasha I said okay I really need to start thinking lots of new things. So hence to why I fed my brain with motivation speakers, like, like for hours, like six, seven hours a day, I would just listen to motivation speakers. And the whole 
uh, the whole purpose behind that was your thoughts create your reality. I wanted to think new thoughts so I'd have a new reality. And it's worked. It's currently working. It's working extremely well. And I know in the future, the thoughts that I'm thinking now are going to soon manifest for me. So that's how I got into motivational speaking. I was once not so happy. I looked up how to be happy. I came across lots of motivational speakers and I started listening. That is cool. And I think this this is the good thing here is, like say for yourself and even myself, like we all kind of experience a stage where we feel so lost. We're in a job that we really don't like and we don't know what to do and kind of fall into that state of unhappiness and what you've done is what a lot of people I suppose miss out on and it's it's asking yourself the right questions so you were looking at how to be happy you were looking at okay if I don't like this job what can I do what do I like and it's it's the questions you ask yourself are the most important things if you ask yourself lousy questions you're going to get lousy answer it's like your brain is like google it's just going to fire off lousy answers so if you're like oh like you know I, I won't get anywhere else now with other than this job like I may just stay here why do I hate my job so much? Or you know, why do I feel shit? And then like our brain is like, well, this is why you feel shit. And instead of going like, okay, how can I not feel shit? What can I do to make myself feel better? What do I enjoy? And it's all just flipping those questions. They're the most important thing because you're exercising your mind. Your mind is going to give you, as you said, what it thinks about. So we train our brain like we train a muscle. So if we constantly get caught up in watching the news, like looking at stuff on TikTok, like say like that time, say obviously with a lot of shit going on on TikTok, everyone just gets consumed in it. So initially what our brain is going to do there is be like, okay, she enjoys feeding off negativity. Like this is obviously something that's really important in her life. So let's keep showing her more of this. You know, if I said to you here now, uh, don't think of a yellow car. I guarantee you'll go outside and you'll just start noticing yellow yeah, cars. Of course, of and course. the same thing happens with getting caught up in the negative things in the news. You're going to start noticing far more of it. Whereas if you actually make that decision to actually like watch, and it's not that you're ignoring things, but you're just feeding your mind better things. And what that does is it attracts more of that. So if I think of not like a yellow car, I'm probably going to attract more yellow cars. It's like when we got a shih tzu I start seeing shih tzus everywhere because there was one in my life so if you start giving yourself more things that are like are helping you with with, uh, you answering the right questions and figuring out what you want you're going to get more of that and you'll notice you're you're like whoa like I'm really starting to go here in the right direction with asking yourself the right questions looking at the right things feeding your mind the right things your brain is going going to be like okay she really wants to work on like her happiness she really wants to work on her creative creativity so I'm going to start seeing more of that do you know i think yeah. i think that's a big one i love it and natasha you really uh hit the nail on the head there as it's how we talk to ourselves it's the questions we ask ourselves i love the fact you pointed that out because that is the be all and end all is how people talk to themselves so again to the listeners listening my question to you is how do you talk to yourself like seriously is it negative is it positive if i was you I would imagine, just imagine there's somebody like a manager, okay? You're in work and there's a manager following you around all day. And this manager is holding a notepad and he has a pen. Every time you think something negative, he writes it down. Every time you think something positive, he writes it down. The negative, too many negative thoughts you could get fired, positive thoughts you're going to get promoted. So this will help the listeners to just be aware of what thoughts am I thinking? Secondly, ask yourself that question. What thoughts am I thinking? Because you said it, Natasha, is the questions we ask ourselves. And I know uh, in life coaching, the number one thing and the main source they get to is thoughts. So, and thoughts and words, because our thoughts obviously are come true or our words come true our thoughts. So, for example, let me give you an example. In life coaching, if someone said, I can't do that, okay? The life coach would simply say, okay, I just want you to do, make one simple switch right now. Instead of saying I can't, say how can I? So never use the words I can't again. Instead, replace I can't with how can I? So Natasha, uh, I want you to go to the gym. If you say I can't go to the gym. No, how can I go to the gym? Natasha, I want you to save 10,000 euros. 
oh, I can't save 10,000 euros. Nope. How can I save 10,000 euros? So just that simple switch from I can't to how can I changes everything. And one of thousands of thousands of different um, examples. Yeah. And like with that then as well, like I know you're kind of touching base on happiness and how to be happy. I was actually listening to a podcast on this re- recently and they explained it really, really well. And he was basically saying happiness is our, our own perception of the world, how we perceive it and our expectations. So if you think of rain, for example, rain itself, it's it's just rain. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. But when we put our expectation of what we expect from rain and how we perceive it, that will dictate our happiness. So some people will see rain and think, yes, happy days, like my my flowers are going to be watered. Someone sees rain and goes, oh, today is just doomy and gloomy and won't be able to go for a walk. So you see, it's not the rain itself. It's our expectations. And it's the same for, for anything in life. You know, maybe if we're in a job, we hate it. It's, it's how we perceive it and our expectations. Maybe it didn't it didn't make us as happy as we thought it would be. And there's nothing wrong with being wrong with that. Like I genuinely thought that a nine to five job was going to be the best thing in the world for me because I was working night shifts before that. I was like, this is going to be the dream. And I genuinely had this story that a nine to five job is what happiness is. Do you know, I don't have to work nights anymore. And I had these really high expectations set for it. And then I got there and I'm like, why am I unhappy? And it's because there, that's how I perceived a nine to five job. And that's what I expected from it. And then I didn't meet those needs. Whereas for someone else, it actually genuinely might be their expectations but for me I realized it wasn't and there's nothing wrong with being wrong but it's how you react next and what you decide to do next and I think it was it was just a really really good explanation of of what actually happiness is because it's going to be different for everyone and how we see the world it's like someone looking out at the ocean as well I might look out at the ocean and think oh my god beautiful lovely day to go out for a swim you might look at the ocean and say oh god like I need to step away from here like I have a really bad fear of drowning and you see, it's it's your perception. It's not the sea itself. The sea is just the sea. It's there. But me and you have a different reaction and a different expectation on how we, we actually perceive it. I love it. Really good words again, Natasha. And I love the analogy you put of uh, the rain. You know, one person can be like, oh, uh, this is great. My flowers are going to be watered and I love the rain. And the other person might like, oh, my God, like there's rain. And all. so it's really your your perspective. And I think that's put, simply put is the glass half full or half empty. You know, if you're the negative person, you're going to say, oh, it's half empty. Where if you're the optimistic person, you're going to say, oh, like, you know, it's half full. Um, so, yeah, it really goes down to our perspective. Like, you know, me, Natasha, one of the things I get all my clients to do is gratitude. And gratitude simply just allows you to focus on the good in your life, which changes your perspective, you know. It allows you to have a better perspective on the world because without us realizing we're constantly giving out and moaning and bitching and complaining and whining, like shut up, Nancy, like stop doing that. Where when you practice gratitude, it actually allows you to start thinking of all of the good and positive in your life. And Tasha, what we think about uh, attracts, you know, this yourself firsthand. So, um, yeah. Definitely 100% all boils down to perspective. Yeah. And even just touching base on gratitude, if anyone follows you on Instagram, they will always see you putting on your story about the game and you doing the game. I actually myself don't even know what exactly it is. I was trying to guess with the words. I was like, okay, first one's definitely gratitude. Second one, <laughs> I was like, hmm, what's, what's the M and the E? So you're going to have to explain it for us. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. With pleasure. So I could be here for the next 30 minutes talking about it. So I'm going to try sum it up real quick um, for the listeners ears also. So G-A-M-E, the game. I get all my clients to play this. There's also a free download in my Instagram bio if anyone does want to check that out. Um, so G in the game stands for gratitude. Simply write down five things you're thankful for every day. Starting with thank you. So what this does, it allows us to focus on all of the good in our life rather than the bad. And you will find what you focus on begins to attract. And you'll also find there's a lot more to be grateful for than you realize. And lastly, grateful people are happy people. It's simply put, if you are grateful, you are happy. And Natasha, it's not the other way around. Happy people aren't grateful. 
grateful people are happy, you know? So gratitude is so important. A in the game stands for affirmation. So affirmation is basically what follows I am. So whether you're conscious of it or not, we all have affirmations. Some people's affirmations are, I am ugly, I am stupid, I am dumb, I am not able, I am useless. So fair enough, there's your affirmations. The, our brains believe whatever we tell it. So whatever we tell it, our brains believe, whether it's negative or positive. So I get all my clients to write down five positive affirmations every day, such as I am beautiful, I am loving, I am caring, I am smart, I am becoming better every day and everywhere. So this allows you to start talking positively about yourself. And Tasha, mark my words. If you are a negative person, at first, this is going to feel like, it's going to feel like torture. You're going to think you're stupid. You're going to think this is La La and Lulu. What am I doing? This is the stupidest thing ever. But with reps, just like building a muscle, Natasha, it takes reps and reps and reps, and then the muscle begins to grow. If you keep talking positive about yourself, you will soon change your perspective on yourself. So M in the game then stands for meditation. So meditation allows you to be aware of your thoughts and sit and observe your thoughts. It also allows you to be in the present moment. But why meditation is so important? Now, there's thousands, thousands of re research done on the benefits of meditation. But more, what it mainly does, it allows you to be aware of your thoughts and see what you're thinking. See where your emotions are stemming from. And our thoughts create our emotions and our feelings. Our thoughts create our realities. So to know where your thoughts are coming and what's actually coming in and what you're thinking about is a major, major advantage over everybody else. And lastly, E in the game then stands for exercise. So exercise, you know, releases feel-good chemicals in your brain, such as endorphins and serotonin, that make you feel good. It promotes well-being. It gives you confidence. You know, it just makes sense to exercise every day. So I found, Natasha, I found, now I've done lots and lots of research on this topic. I didn't just suddenly come up with this. I found if you can practice gratitude, practice affirmations, meditate, and exercise every single day, you will inevitably become a happier, more confident person. You will start to love yourself more. You will start to love the world around you more. And, you know, this is scientifically researched and backed. It's proven that the results will follow. Uh, so that's what the game stands for. And that's what I love to preach, as you know, Natasha. Yeah, unreal. And I think this is the big thing about it is like people want like results straight away. So they do like the gratitude affirmations and stuff one morning. And it's like the gym. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. it's what you have to do consistently. And especially like because I know people kind of see it especially affirmations you can kind of see them as wishy-washy as you said but you don't have to believe them just now like you said I am becoming you can stick in that becoming for as long as you want because you're working on it so you don't have to tell yourself lies and be like oh yeah I'm beautiful even though you genuinely yes. don't yes. believe that's not going to work it's going to be like okay I'm actually becoming to learn to love myself what can I do more of to learn to love myself more and you're actually it's, it's a work in progress then so you're you don't have to tell yourself lies you can actually just tell yourself what you're working on which is the, the best thing about it and like that I do think it's one of those things it definitely does work but people just want something fancy that works now, unfortunately. Um, so if you can just, it's so, so simple. Like you said, it, it doesn't take long. Do you know, it's it's amazing the the like positive effects of it. And I suppose to kind of come away from that then, and if we look at like myself and yourself, we're both from very small towns and yourself like aspiring to be a life coach, when we look at a small town there's how many people in the town want to become life coaches not many and to yeah. come on and come on social media and like you know express what you want to do and I think as well especially as like a male you see a lot of females doing it but you don't see a lot of males doing it because I think males are more inclined to slag each other for like I feel like if my brother came on doing that in the morning his friends would slag the living day like that of him yeah so yeah how how do you cope with that and overcome with that? Say if someone is kind of in your position, she's like, I'd love to do something like Stephen's doing, but like, my God, like the lads would, 
like because obviously I touch a lot like on my page with like females and stuff but for yourself or if there is any males listening like what what advice would you give to them or how did you overcome that well advice firstly people are going to judge no matter what you do no matter what you do so you might as well do something you love to do like David Goggins is one of up there one of my favorite people on the planet and just solely for his sheer mindset and willpower uh, David Goggins has a book out called Can't Hurt Me. If any of you want to read that, it's a really good read. But David Goggins has a quote and it says, you can walk on water and people will say it's because you can't swim. So literally, even if you pull off a miracle, there's going to be haters, you know? So never worry about other people's perspective and opinion. Just worry about you. You do you. And I can promise you, when they go home, they are not thinking about you. Like, they are not sitting home saying, what's Natasha doing? I can't believe Natasha's doing this. They don't care about you. Everyone is way too caught up on themselves to care about other people. And that's the truth of it. You mentioned uh, at the very start, small town, small town syndrome. And I think that was kind of the overall main message. How do you deal with small town syndrome? Yeah. So first thing is stay away from negativity. At all costs, if you have a negative friend or you're in a neg- ne- negative environment or your workplace is negative, like get away from it. Be- and when I say negative, how you uh, decide if it is a negative friendship, environment, workplace is if you go hang around with this person or you go into this environment and you feel bad, you feel down, you f- like you don't want to do it. You almost have a fear of of going hanging around with this person because you know they're so negative. So do not accept negativity. Cut negativity out of your life at all costs. And small town syndrome, I think it's something you need to break away from. You need to work on self-development and realize that you are greater than this small town. You are greater than people knowing your every move and every action. Natasha, you know yourself firsthand. You're literally over the road. Uh, small town, you went and traveled, you know? What is everyone else in this small town saying about you going traveling? It's not going to work. You're going to fail. You're stupid. Even leaving your job, Natasha, be, uh, you mentioned earlier you had a very secure full-time job to go set up your own business and become self-employed. Small town syndrome would say, uh, you can't do this. This is stupid. Uh, you're going to fail. This isn't secure, you know? So, what is actually happening there, Natasha? These people are telling the truth, but they're saying truth from their perspective. They wouldn't be able. They are telling you what they believe because they wouldn't be able, but they don't see your goal, Natasha. They don't see your vision and what you want to do. So me, when I tell people I want to become a life coach, when I tell people I want to become the best motivational speaker in the world, do you think I, I know people are laughing at me? I just don't hear it. You know, people are going to be laughing and saying, look at this lad. And this lad is, is uh, he has his head in, in the clouds. I just don't hear it. I don't listen to it. Because realistically, like, would you rather be on the field playing or in the stand? And that's the way I look at anyone about to set off and go do a goal or move out of their town or leave their job. Don't listen to the people in the stands or in the stand. Like, they're spectators. They, they're literally paying to watch you. So just give them a show to watch. Yeah, I think you've you hit the nail on the head. And even like to bring it back to being surrounded, like, you know, say if it's like a really toxic workplace, that actually affects your health. Like that can bring on disease and everything. If you feel sick to your stomach on a Sunday night, that's having a huge impact on like your immune system, your overall health, like, and you don't even realize it. So you know, for other people bitching about each other, is that worth being around if it could actually bring on a physical illness into mm. your body? Is that worth making you ill, do you know? And I think that's a, a big way to to think about it. And I think that's an important one as well, is like who who you tell what you want to do to. Because if you're telling it to people who have never achieved what you want to achieve, of course they're going to tell you it's, it's absolutely not possible. And like you said, it's because it's, that's their belief it's not your belief 
Yeah. So it is important who you go to advice. And it's it's not out of a space of ignorance, right? And they just genuinely don't know any better. Like if I was saying, like say if I send it to my mom that like I want to become an online coach or so, and stuff, like no offense to her, but it's not something she has ever done. Yeah. So she yeah. can't she just sees the security in a job, which is something she would have had before. So she's saying that to me. And it's it's coming, it's actually coming from a good place. It's she mm. wants safety for me. It's coming <laughs> from a good place. But it that could impact me then on actually going and achieving it. Whereas if I said it to someone who is an online coach, they'd be yeah. like, Oh my god, yeah, like there's so many opportunities. Yes. So it's who you say it to, make sure you're going to advice to someone who is that being in that position. And don't get me wrong, you can go to your mom for a lot of other advice that she has experienced and she can help you with, but it depends what you're looking for advice for. What I always say is like look at what you need help with and then figure out if someone has been in that position, they will be able to help you with it. Like say, for example, you could go to someone, as I said, for an online coach, but maybe if it was like about like maybe starting out like a house or learning to use the washing machine or whatever yeah. it is, there's a lot yeah. of other things that you could go to your mom for or you know, advice in general. But it's just being careful because like that, it'll just, you know, it really narrows where your vision and like there is so much more. And I got that from traveling as well. Like say people where I'm from, obviously there's not many like online coaches and stuff. I actually don't even, is there any in Roscoe? I don't even know. Um, But like when I took myself over to Bali, like everyone around me was nearly an online coach in some way, shape or form. And you're like, the conversations are different. And it's just like, oh my God, like you realize there's so much possibility. Like it's amazing. And it's not like, and nobody's in competition with each other. Everyone's there to help each other out, which is the most amazing things. So like that, if you can take yourself into an environment and you don't even have to move halfway across the world for this. We have the internet. You can literally, like I done this before I became, like when I was doing my personal training course, I would text other PTs and ask them for advice. Some yeah. of them didn't text me back and I did not mind that. I had myself set up that some people might genuinely be too busy to even see my message and that was absolutely okay. Yeah. But I'll just stay, I said messaging until people actually came back and gave me advice. And like that then I was going to the right people for advice. And like you were saying there about like people laughing at you and stuff, that was me like me younger would laugh at people if they if they were going on their stories to talk on their stories I would be laughing and staring at them like do you know what are they at and it was because it was the biggest insecurity I had so I will tell myself that they're stupid for doing that to make myself feel better because I can't do it so yes. I, was like, oh, I feel great now do you know because you have to do it judge someone else to feel good and then when it came to me talking about my story I remember it so well I was after doing holding a zoom uh class workout class and I was like right tonight is the night I'm coming on to and you know just putting up the phone and you're just like oh fucking hell <laughs> I'm like this is karma now for laughing at other people for doing it like yeah. it's tough yeah. and and that's where it is like if you find yourself judging anyone I would always bring that back like that how you perceive the world because it's obviously something that just needs work on and if someone else is giving that to you their best bet would probably to look for advice off you you know if, if that's the position they're in so it's always do you know, go, making sure you you hold that to yourself that it's nothing you're ever doing bad. Like, actually, that reminds me today there, I put up a TikTok and someone commented, uh, some people just shouldn't do podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And here I am just like an hour later recording a podcast. And, I, you know, I could have took that on board and be like, you know what, Stephen, I, I actually don't feel well now. I'm not doing this, yeah, this yeah. podcast today. And totally forget the fact that last week I put up a TikTok and someone said like wow this is amazing if one person sees sees this do you know it could really change your yes. life and it's one of those things like we'll we'll have so like so many people like clients to finish up me and like Tasha you've changed my life you hear it so often but that one comment could ruin my week and I, yeah. I hear and it's it's the power and the energy of one bad comment towards a thousand good ones it's it's crazy isn't it yeah, yeah. and um, first of all, let me say you're a fantastic podcast host so um, shut that negative comment right down. And I mean that you're fantastic. Uh, secondly is you mentioned um, the negative comment. I think, firstly, that's a place of insecurity for them. Okay. If someone is ever negative and mean towards someone else. So Tasha, think about this person. Took time out of their day to try say a negative comment to put you down. That person is hurting. Okay, he's hurting or she's hurting. The only reason someone is negative towards someone else is because they're in a dark place and they're trying to bring this person back down to their level that they're not happy with. Or number two, they're just jealous of you. They want to start a podcast so they'll say this, okay? So 
listeners, if someone is ever mean and negative to you, do not take it personal. It is never about you. It is always about them. And just going back to uh, or the thought process you mentioned, um, your mom uh, and the jobs, and uh, they genuinely do care for you. They want, they have your best interests at heart. They think you're going to fail. They think you're going to mess up. But it goes back to perspective again, doesn't it? That's their perspective on their life, and you have a complete different one. But I almost put people into two categories, Natasha. So category number one is open mind. Category number two is closed mind. So an open mind person, no matter what idea someone comes to them with, they'll go, oh, okay, this is interesting. Tell me more. How are you going to do this? What do you mean? It's open. The conversation is open. I hang around with these people as much as I can. Like I have these people in my life, open minded people. The closed minded people are people who immediately shut things off. As in, oh, I have this business idea. Stupid, not going to work. Oh, I want to go to the gym. Why would you want to go to the gym? That's a stupid idea. You know, they immediately shut it off. So listeners, hang around with open-minded people as much as you can because they're the people that are going to give you new insights and encourage you and motivate you to actually go and pursue your goals. Uh, and the reason I, I'm saying that is on the topic of uh, small town syndrome. You know, like most people in a small town are closed minded and they don't even realize. Um, so, yeah, hang around the open minded people as much as possible. Yeah, 100 percent. And if we take it back to insecurities, right, some people might look at myself and yourself and think, We have absolutely no insecurities. Like we have it all figured out. Like you're an aspiring life coach. I'm an online coach as well and touches on mindset stuff. Some people can think, Jesus, like they really have everything together. But like, we're just normal human beings as well. Like we just done work in different places that we maybe would have been like, I would have been insecure about going to the gym. So I decided to do something about it. Um, So everyone has insecurities that they can work on. And I suppose my biggest insecurity, which is probably your like biggest advantage that you have is I would love to be a public speaker. Like I would love that. I could go live on Instagram here now, I could chat in my stories, I could chat away on this podcast. You put five people physically in front of me here now and I lose my shit. Like, and that's my <laughs> biggest insecurity. So that's one that I'm working on. But for you, Stephen, do you have any insecurities that you are working on? Oh, of course, many, you know. Um I think if anybody said they don't have insecurities, they would be lying. I think everybody, no matter who you are, is fighting demons. You know, there's a reason I go to the gym every day. There's a reason I practice gratitude every day. There's a reason I get cold showers every day is to fight my demons, to fight my insecurities, to fight my weak mind and to overcome any, sorry, laziness and fear and and demons that, that I have so you really hit the nail on the head there it's about attacking your insecurities you know going head first public speaking it's the number one fear in the world in case you didn't know ahead of death so it's okay to feel fearful of that but the best thing you can do Natasha is attack your insecurities and I seen you do a public speech there not so long ago credit to that but yeah for the people at home is attack your insecurities like face them head first look yourself in the mirror whether you might be insecure about your body you know for example the best thing you can do is truthfully take off your clothes and look yourself in the mirror and do this repeatedly for 10 15 days and just watch yourself overcome that insecurity and actually start to love yourself a little bit more and a little off uh, topic here at Natasha but for yourself there's a speaking organization called Toastmasters I'm a member of it they teach you public speaking there's definitely a club in Ross Gray I've done my research um, I would happily join that club with you as well if you wanted some company um, so that will advance your public speaking career but to go back on the point now uh, just if anybody has insecurities it's completely normal but the best thing you can do is Learn how to attack them and overcome them. Do I have insecurities? 100%. Am I going to tell you what they are? 
No, because they're my insecurities. <laughs> you know, needless to say, I'm working on them. We, we should all work on our weaknesses, work on our insecurities uh, to make them become strengths. Yeah, because I think that's the thing. Like we can talk about topics and stuff that like we're really good at talking about or I can do things that I'm really good at and we'll always stick to things that we're good at and comfortable at doing. And it was the same even like with me starting this podcast. Like I never had to do this. I didn't have to do this. Nobody's forcing me to do it. But like you said, there's things you do on a day-to-day basis to to fight those like demons. And that is your responsibility is, is how you react to them and to understand like everyone has has that battle there. Like you are absolutely not the only one. And that's that's the main point I wanted to get across with it. Um, just to realize that like everyone is human. No one is no no superhuman you know like anyone who is like a, a public speaker or anything like that it's not that they were born with that they just realized it was something that they weren't good at doing and they decided okay how they asked themselves that right question how am I going to get better with it and it's like the gym if you're insecure about the gym which I was like you don't have to do that in big and massive it might be just a case of like you know like hiring a coach or hiring someone in the gym to just like show you around the machines you don't even have to do it in that day the next day you might just walk in and walk on the treadmill for an hour you might do that for five weeks you might do it for five years but you've done something to work on that insecurity yeah agreed i love that and you mentioned that you said there it's not about jumping right in and overcoming that insecurity and going straight up to the weight section full of men if you're an insecure little girl you know it's a matter of just saying, okay, I'm going to walk into the gym and I'm going to go on the treadmill for five minutes. It's starting extremely small. Like, I have a lot of people come to me and say, you know, I've, I'm really socially awkward. Uh, what do I do? So rather than saying, okay, I want you to stand on top of the stage in, in your ne- next uh, hall in school or ceremony in school and talk, rather than jumping right into something as extreme as that, I would say, I want you to set a goal tomorrow to talk to one shopkeeper. So just say, hey, it's a lovely day. And you know, it may go awkward as F, awkward as fuck. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse on this, but I did anyway. It may, it may be really awkward, but the second time you do it, a little less awkward. Third time you do it, a little less awkward. Um, so yeah, main message there, start small. Start extremely small. Build some momentum build some confidence and when that snowball is rolling Natasha it's just picking up more and more snow it's as simple as that so yes definitely start small yeah it's actually funny you said that about the shopkeeper because like even those jobs that you might look at that like say I worked in Supermax like you might look back at them like oh you actually learn something from all of those small things they all play such an important role if I didn't start off in Supermax like that helped me a lot because I when I started working there Someone comes to the counter, all I'll say is, hello. I don't want to say, <laughs> like, to, to actually physically say hello killed me. I, I wasn't good at, like, talking to strangers. Unless it's someone I'm really, really familiar with, I would completely be myself. But as soon as I don't know you, I freeze. I cannot get words out. So I would just, anyone comes, I'm like, hello. Yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> yeah, yeah That's yeah. all that came out, right? And as I stood working, I was like, oh, gee, I know I'm really hating this because I can't have conversations with people. It's something I wasn't able to do. I felt really awkward about it. Like getting just sweaty at the counter and everything. And then as I stood working there, like that simple job, like that helped me a lot. Like when I felt myself saying, hello, how are you? That was a huge step for me. Like that, And that might be something that comes to you so easy because we all have different traits and different things we're better at. But like, I was like, oh my God, wow. Like, you know, I started to notice myself like, oh, like the weather today and starting conversations. It was something I could genuinely never do. And like, to, like it was that snowball effect to where I am now. Like, you know, as an online coach, like Lovely. all those small that. jobs helped me. Like they all played on a very important role. I would not change any of them. Lovely. And I, I love your words there. And I think all the listeners can really take from your little story that you said right there. Like you started off working in a supermax, literally afraid to say hello to people. Where now you're holding your own podcast. I seen you do a public speaking event there last week. You know, you're out there, you're talking, your communication skills right now are incredible, really good communication skills. So like it all started from a, hey, how are you? You know, so like Rome wasn't built in the day, you know. Uh, when you set out to do anything like public speaking or setting up your own business or overcoming social anxiety or losing that body fat you have, it's going to take time. 
like when you're aware of this, it makes the process easier. Do you know, there's a quote or a saying from Will Smith that I love. And he, he, it goes like this. When I set out to build a house, I don't set out to build the biggest, bestest house. What I do is day by day, I lay a single brick. I lay a single brick as good as I can lay this brick. He lays the brick to the best of his ability. And if you do that every day, just lay that brick as perfect as you can every single day, before you know it, Natasha, you are going to have a beautiful, fully built house. And it all starts with brick by brick, you know? And your story there of how you, again, afraid to say hello to now public speaking and holding your own podcast, I think is incredible. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I think you've even covered that last, um, I suppose, note. If you had advice for anyone started, like you've just hit the nail on the head there is it's that one small brick. And like all those jobs that you're absolutely hating, I always kind of ask myself, okay, what can I learn from them? Like I worked in a, in a call center then, the time next and again it's more oh, yeah. and I was yeah. like oh but it's, it's helped me in a way um and it made me realize what I don't want so I realized okay like I don't want to be working night shifts and supermax okay I tried that nine to five job I thought it was going to be okay now I've realized it's actually even though I hate it it's actually bringing me a step closer to what I would love to do so all these things they play a vitally important role and don't don't take that for granted yes I love it and it's about maneuver it's about okay being self-aware I'm not happy here let's try something else I'm happy here, let's stay, stick to this for a while. I'm not happy here, let's try this. But it all starts with taking that jump. And we, we touched on this at the very start, you know. For the listeners there, if you said that by any advice, like you might have a goal or some sort of vision or something you want to do in your mind and you're unsure about it. I say go for it, do it. And it may not work right away. It may actually be the worst thing you've ever done. But as you said, you learn something from everything you do. So from that jump, you're going to say, okay, I don't want to do this instead of I actually want to do this. Or, oh my God, I don't really like this part, but I love the sales. Maybe I'm going to get into sales. I don't like the sales, but I do love the market. Maybe I might get into market. Like from that initial jump, you will find out what you do want to do. Yeah, uh, even at this, like before we started this podcast, like we were talking about rich and and the definition of rich and like it's, do you know, it's not about the money in the account. Maybe that is the goal for some people and that's yeah. actually fine, but I genuinely believe it doesn't mean anything unless you're doing something that is genuinely fulfilling on a day-to-day basis. So true. Like, you know, you, you could say, like even money, for the people who have money goals, it's still not their top, value and priority in life and it shouldn't be natasha if i said to you okay what's your what's your number one goal in life or your number one vision and you said a million dollars a million euros i say okay fair so if i said to you i give you a million euros but you can't wake up tomorrow would you take it no no so you you prioritize time more than money if i said to you okay i'll give you a million euros but your mother is going to be sick every day for the rest of her life would you take it no no so you value family more than time so like there's actually so much more that we value more than money without us even realizing and i i just want to touch on this note because we're talking about money and values and and life i follow this dude called brad lee he's an amazing um Uh, entrepreneur for all the fellas out there he's more targeted towards males but yeah he says if i give you a million euros tomorrow when you woke up would you be happy you would be happy you'd be fucking on cloud nine there would be nothing that could get you down for months you have a million euros and then he goes if if i give you a million euros but you could if you took the million euros but you couldn't wake up tomorrow would you take it the answer is no, you wouldn't. So the question is, why aren't you as happy when you wake up as you would be getting a million euros? You know, so waking up is worth more than a million euros. And the main message was to just change our mindset, change our perspective on 
actually waking up each day and the value of of life and the value of living yeah and that's it just being being rich in life like i was saying to you like i would gladly you know be happy if i was living in a tiny place but i was waking up to actually step foot on the beach like th- that is i'd be rich i'd feel like a millionaire towards if i had to yeah. stay somewhere like where i wasn't around any sort of nature and I, i'm sitting in an office every single day and i couldn't do anything else but i was a millionaire from it like I would just be so miserable. I could never maybe do anything with that that money. So like, what good is it to me then? You know. Um. So it's just changing your definition of what rich actually is to you. And for me, it is even to wake up and do this job that I do. That it's mine. Everything is what I've built. Like that. That's more than anything I'd ever want. Like you know that kind of way. Yes, I love it. And exactly what you said. Just changing the definition of rich. Like yeah. rich is no longer a million dollars in the bank account. Rich should be freedom and happiness and health and family and love. All of that is rich, you know. If you yeah. have that, you're rich. Yeah, and I even see that in, in Bali. Like, the, they have nothing. And they are the happiest people, the kindest people. They will, they'll they'll do anything for you. They don't have anything. And they would do anything. I see the place I used to live, Um, it was like a family that owned it. So mom and dad, like, really, really nice people. 6 a.m. every morning that father was out playing badminton and playing with kites with his son and the the smiles the laughter I was just looking at and I was like oh my god it it just completely changed my perspective on everything like the value of your family the value of doing something simple like that flying a kite making memories like that I think we've lost touch with that we're all in separate rooms one brother's in a room playing a playstation we're not even eating at the same table anymore they all they, they, they still hold on to those traditions and I genuinely believe they have no money but it's those traditions of just doing things together is is what a rich life is Natasha beautiful beautiful words beautiful imagery and I could not agree more yeah I think we've we've hit everything we need to hit there I think we've given a fair bit of knowledge <laughs> yeah, really really enjoyed that conversation as well like you know and it's great uh, talking to someone with like uh uh, like like-minded m- mindset you know like-minded person with an open mind you know and again to the listeners to the viewers it's extremely important to have these people in your life you know and assess look at the five people you last hung around with or the five people you contact the most and ask yourself is this person benefiting me or is this person uh not benefiting me and ask yourself that question um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the conversation, Natasha. Uh, re- really fun. And thanks so, so much, Stephen, for hopping on. For anyone who is looking for yourself or looking for a bit of mindset coaching or fitness coaching or online coaching or whatever it may be, where can they best get in touch with you? Best get in touch with me would be via Instagram. So my Instagram handle is mind underscore matters underscore fitness. That's mind matters fitness. And my emoji or my profile picture I'm just crossing my hands you'll see me <laughs> perfect um, and what I'll do is I'll leave your your handle anyways under the the podcast as well so if anyone is on the description section you'll see uh, a link to to Stephen's page as well but yeah Stephen it's been a pleasure thank you so so much thank you Natasha pleasure the pleasure is mine thank you